You can also generate random numbers if you need to. Random numbers might be generated, for example, if you want to just get a random assortment of, let's say, any 10 customers from your list. One way of doing that would be to just assign random numbers to each customer in your query and then maybe do a top 10 based on that random assortment of numbers. When you use RAND, you have a choice. You can either use it as we have here with no parameter or you can give it a value that will be used as the seed that RAND will be based on. And let me show you what that looks like. If I type in 3 here, and select RAND based on that seed value of 3, here's the value that I get back, 0.713629, so and so. RAND always returns a value between 0 and 1. If you need your random value to be, let's say, between 1 and 100, you would just multiply the result that you get back from RAND times 100, but be careful because RAND doesn't really always give you back a truly random number. Anytime I run RAND against the number 3, I'm always going to get back this same quote-unquote random number, 0.71362 and so on. So, if you really need a truly random grouping of numbers, you need to be sure that you send a different value to RAND each time. And one way to do that is to create a value based on the current date. Here we're using the date part function to extract the minutes and seconds and milliseconds from date and multiply them together in order to give us an int number that will always be different since time marches on. That's one way that you can make sure that RAND always gives you back a truly or at least more closely random number. You can also round numbers. We saw earlier when working with STR, it does a little bit of rounding for you if you want. The round function gives you a bit more functionality. And here you'll see several ways of using round, and the best thing is probably to just show you. I'll select all this and run it. And now when we look at the results, you'll see that what we called here rounded this column was simply rounding price with zero decimal places. In other words, it rounded 6.58 to 7, 1.09 to 1. That's one form of rounding. Here, we're taking round and we're going to truncate. The extra argument here, the 1, allows us to truncate. And so, truncating, we're removing everything after that uh, decimal point. So instead of rounding up to 7, we're going to just truncate back down to 6. Okay? Approximated, the approximate one is an example of using rounding to a single decimal place. So instead of rounding to a whole number, we're rounding this 6.58 to 6.6. .6. So you can specify here in the second argument the number of decimal places you want to round to, either to zero decimal places if you want a whole number, one decimal place, two, and so on. What if you want to round in the other direction, to tens or hundreds rather than decimals? Well, then you just use a negative number in this second argument. So this approximate two, we're rounding to the nearest tens, all right? So 12 is rounded to 10, and 6.58 is also rounded to 10. 1 is just rounded to 0. And of course, we're just showing the remaining zeros here because this is using the same money data type that price uses in the table. OK? So you can round to whatever decimal places you want or to whatever power of 10 you want. And optionally, you can also truncate and you can determine where you want the value to be truncated.